Texas eight and four finally gets rid of the issue. Jimbo Fisher is out in Aggie land as they fire him. Buy him out for what, 75, 76 million dollars. Pretty amazing. But listen, as we've talked about, we talked about Jimbo a lot on this show throughout the season and whether they'd finally let go and rip this band-aid off that they probably should have ripped off years ago. And we talked about the buyout, but the buyout with Texas A&M is not an issue. Like they have more money than, than any school in the country. Like this was, this was writing pennies. This was giving a little check to charity. Uh, they care about winning <laughs> fo football games in Texas A&M, even though if you can't really notice that, but uh, this is a program that really is whoever steps into this job should be stepping into success. Now, obviously you're going to see some guys leave and transfer and stuff like that. But I think if you get the right guy in there and, and swiftly do it, uh, you, you could easily, uh, keep a lot of these guys and stuff like that. And obviously NIL has a ton of it too. I mean, they're all getting paid out the wazoo. So it's not like a lot of these guys were there because of Jimbo Fisher. A lot of them were there because they're getting paid very handsomely to be there. So uh, <laughs> whoever steps into this job, I mean, this is an envious position. This is one of the top jobs in college football. It really is because you're going to get paid out the wazoo. You're going to get recruits. You're in Texas. You have an incredible fan base. You're in the SEC. Now I know they haven't had a lot of success really in quite some time, but you get the right person in Texas A&M, they are a problem. And that's why, as an LSU fan, I was kind of sad to see that this was, this was a very sad, somber day because Texas 8-4, and four, that, they were we had them right where we wanted them. Like, just, yeah, yeah. you get your recruits, you get it hyped up, it's a fun game, but, like, you usually lose. And um, if they can get the right guy, they're going to be a problem. I mean, they, they should be a problem quickly, but they got to get the right guy. Yeah, a few thoughts on this. Uh, pretty hilarious that uh, A&M's boosters – we're posing with like a hundred and sixty million dollar check uh, before firing Jimbo Fisher, so that's pretty hilarious and just demonstrates how much money that program has at its hand. I mean, they they have more money than they know what to do with. There are very few schools in this country that can match A and M in terms of a resources uh, perspective, and none of them are in the SEC. I'll tell you that right now. Not Georgia, not Alabama, not LSU. Uh, and, th th and they're, you know, maybe uh, Oregon probably can, but it, that, this is a great opportunity for the Aggies to hire a great coach. Listen, Jimbo's a good coach, and a good coach gets you eight, nine, ten wins a year. That's what he is. He's not a great coach. If you get a great coach, AM will be perennial national championship contenders year after year after year. And you want to know why? The name of the game in college football is is talent. If you got the talent, you always have a chance. And AM's been stacking top 10, top five recruiting classes they got players for the past there. for the past four or five years. You insert Kirby Smart or Nick Saban into that program today. They are contenders today. That's just the that's how much talent they have in the building. Nobody was doing less with more than Jimbo Fisher. Now who they target, I don't know, but they absolutely should not do something like risque. What they should do is go get a surefire good coach, a great coach, and they're going to pay to do it. They'll have pretty much everybody at their disposal they want. There's a few candidates that probably won't uh, be interested in the AM job because they like where they're at. Uh, and, you know, everybody's probably thinking about Dan Lanning. I don't think Dan Lanning's going to uh, leave Oregon because if you want to talk about resources, Oregon's giving Dan Lanning all he needs. Uh, to win a national championship up there. But this had to happen. I'm sure Aggie fans are very excited here today because it gives them a, a glimpse of hope to the future uh, that maybe now we can get the guy, the right guy in the building. Kevin Sumlin, Jimbo Fisher, good coaches, not great coaches. You need a great coach to win a national championship. Where they go from here, your guess is as good as mine, uh, but it is undoubtedly a top, it's an elite, elite coaching gig it's one of the yeah. very best in the country yeah i mean it, it's interesting the direction they could go because they could go the direction uh that i i think they're gonna go which is you know throw money at the biggest names in college football and try to pry some away from from these jobs i mean i, I mean i'm I, like like listen it's not going to happen but you're fools if you don't think they're walking up to nick saban and kirby smart store being like hey here's 150 200 million dollars like you come coach our, our team like that is happening now will, will they leave Probably not because, you know, they're making handsome money. They'll probably get raises. They'll probably get raises because Texas A&M came and asked. And they're like, everybody oh. is about to get raises. Yes, uh, this, everybody. Is, this is the best news. This is the, to, the happiest people outside the Aggies are all the great head coaches because Texas A&M is going to knock on the door and they're going to be like, offer this ridiculous contract. And they'll be, 
and they'll go back to Georgia or Alabama and be like, you know, I'll stay, but I'm going to need a $5 million raise. And yeah. they're going to have no choice but to give it to them, right? Because you're not letting Kirby Smart walk out the door. You're not letting Nick Saban walk out that door. You're not letting Jim Harbaugh walk out the door if you're Michigan. Now, that's an interesting name to keep an eye on it. Depending on all this Michigan thing shakes, it shakes out, I guarantee you Texas A&M is keeping a close eye on that. Uh, I, I think if that that would be my first my first call. My first call would be to Harbaugh right now, today, while he's suspended. Hey, Jim, how are things going over there at Michigan? How how are, how, how are they treating you? How are the Big Ten treating you? You know, yeah, it's a little, it's a lot. I, I I don't think he'll leave Michigan, but I'll tell you what, this thing, this whole thing, depending how it plays out and stuff like that, if there's a suspension coming from the Big Ten, not the NCAA too, right? The Big Ten suspends him. And very interesting. Maybe he wants to get out of there. And obviously 100, 150, 200 million dollars talks, right? I got a name. I got a name for you, and it is one that you have uh, mentioned, Urban Meyer. Yes. Talk talk about talk about a, a, a just a, get him back in the SEC baby. blockbuster <laughs> hire. That listen, Ohio State and Florida kind of had that championship pedigree that he was stepping into a program that knew what it was like to win titles. That's not A and M, but don't be confused. A and M is as good of a job as Florida and Ohio State when Urban Meyer took over those programs because of the talent that's already in the building and the willingness, not only the means, but the Aggies have the willingness and the means to get Urban Meyer whatever he needs. Spend whatever you want on your coaching staff. We're going to spend money on this NIL stuff. I think Urban Meyer is a name to watch here. I really, really uh, do. like. Listen, man, get Urban back in the SEC, man. And listen, it, like, listen, I, I, like, I hate Texas A and M, so I do not want to see them build this yeah. thing up. That's why Me I was neither. perfectly, I was, I was perfectly happy with Jimbo just sitting there yeah. and just being Texas eight and four. But they have a real opportunity here. And I, like I said, and I think we talked about it off the show. You know, there's up and comers and stuff like that. You know, I know I heard Elko out of Duke. I heard Deion Sanders, and I'm just like, no, no, no. like. It, it, it was the same thing with LSU, I feel, about Texas A&M. Like, people were talking about Billy Napier, and I was like, no, no, get that guy out of here. No, that that's that's what bad programs do. Give me the proven guy. Get What does LSU go and do? They go and get Brian Kelly. Now, you can say Brian Kelly hasn't had the best start, but he won the West. He's probably headed into a 9-3 and three season. It's, 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 it's pretty good, you know, considering what he took over. You have the same opportunity here for Texas A&M. They should not be thinking about – any kind of risk, it needs to be no Jimbo, you know, no, not Jimbo, uh, Jim Harbaugh, Urban Meyer, those kind of guys. Like they, and they need to be throwing blank checks. And I think if they get this thing right, they they have a very good opportunity to be really good in a powerhouse. And, and this SEC just keeps getting stronger if they can get this higher right. Coming up after the break, we just talked about him, Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. He's suspended for the rest of the season. We are going to discuss him. <laughs> 